thank you guys so much for being here. I'm so excited sure. to talk to you guys. Um, I guess uh, just to, to kind of begin, I think uh, Dan and I are both sort of curious at a show like Search Party, which is so high stakes and so kind of uh, surreal in so many ways. How do both of you manage to make your characters, Portia and Drew, feel like real grounded people in you know, situations that are real? I feel like we go from ordinary to this, this surreal setting so often. Um, how do you guys like face that as a challenge? Meredith, you want to start? I'll start. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> I feel it all starts, I feel like, with the writing and also just what your uh, tonal preferences in comedy, like what I like to watch and the actors that I like, and um, it's all the script. So I kind of like, although Portia is a satirical archetype of a woman, she's such a real person to me. And so I don't treat her as if she's a joke and the writing kind of backs that up. So it's easy for me to like the foundation of where I play her is just comes from a grounded place because they write, they write them so nuanced and interesting. So it's, it's just what I like to, the comedy I like is pretty sad. So. <laughs> yeah. It's just taking like the writing at face value and just taking every scene and, you know, the more serious we are, the funnier it's going to be. And then, you know, if there are grounded characters like, Dory and Drew, then all the ancillary characters can sort of pop off, and then it makes everything just um, funnier, I suppose. So, uh, and then also, all these characters have very like real grounded wants and emotions. It's just uh, very mm -hmm. heightened settings. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, people do murder people in various <laughs> bodies. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that much is true, John. That is true. I feel like it's not even. It's not like uh, that crazy. Or improbable that this could. What do you have in your past, John? This is where murdering people. <laughs> is normal. Oh, nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Meredith, I, I would love to direct a question to you. One of my favorite scenes from uh, some of the early episodes in season five is when you are teaching the acting class. And perhaps I'm wrong, perhaps I'm reading into something, but I got the vibe that I was watching an actress who maybe has found herself in some sort of crazy acting classes with some crazy acting teachers, perhaps in her past. Did you, yeah, what, did, what did you pull on for, uh, for that scene? Because I thought it was so funny. Thanks. Um, I, yeah, I had an acting, uh, acting teacher who's not at all an alcoholic, um, but she was she would always do these like, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had, I just had so much fun playing like Portia's rock bottom and like a, a woman who's like, it's so funny because it's been like six months, but it was fun playing. Like she's really like, she's, oh, you know, at least she views herself as like washed up and that, that kind of teacher that's like res a little, like obviously jealous and resentful that they're not working or whatever it is. Um, I just, yeah, I totally had, I had so much fun playing with uh, some people from my past. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Without naming names specifically, of course. <laughs> Very diplomatic, I think. Yeah. Uh, I will say I've never met a saint, like a normal sane acting teacher personally. Or uh, actor or actress. Right, I, actors or are actually- No, I wasn't gonna say that Meredith, but now that we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna let that go instead, but you know, your words, not mine. Um, I guess so, I, I think, um, you know, what's so interesting about season five is that Dory's really able to kind of like lean into her power so much so that it becomes magnetic and it becomes, mm -hmm. you know, she becomes sort of cult-like. I guess I'm, I'm curious to know, what is it in both of your characters that you feel like makes them susceptible to somebody who has that power? And then also, uh, you know, do you think, John and, Mer John and Meredith, that you guys would ever join a cult? I'll start with you, John. <laughs> um, yeah, I think what makes Drew susceptible is like a lot of things. I mean, one being the fact that they've collectively gone through this traumatic experience together. So it's like about, I think Drew even says it when he's talking about Drew and Portia coming together, where it's like no one else is going to love us or understand us. I think it's like a lot of that. So he's bonded to Dory and there's a comfortability and there is like a love, even though it is a sort of a toxic love. Um, and then also just rock bottom, like I don't know, he doesn't have anywhere else to go. Like, like at this point when we see him in season five, he's uh, like a full 
like moral less person who's trying to kick grandmas out of their houses to sell frozen yogurt so it's like he's already become selfish and doesn't like himself and he's sort of given up and then somebody comes along with like history and a full plan and it's like all right well i might as well everybody's doing it you know i have nothing else to to live for um and would i be susceptible to a cult I've said, actually, I don't think I would be at all because I don't really love like group activities. <laughs> I don't think, you know, when everyone's like, uh, I don't know. I, but then also I have done improv. So improv is like a full cult and it's. Oh, for sure. So <laughs> I've already done cult. it before. So I think maybe I'm out of a cult and now I'm like, all right, I, uh, I don't think I would go back into one. So I like um, that. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're the least likely to join a cult. I and mean, I would obviously be the most. And so, is, well, Portia, Portia was ahead of the curve. She was just like looking for a, her identity and she, like susceptibility is all, I mean, she's the most susceptible character that I don't know, exists. Um, she's literally looked for herself and other people since like the very first scene. She doesn't know who she is at all. And she's also like, this is the first time in the beginning of season five, her light is totally burned out. And it was very fun playing like, what's her rock bottom and then the second that she's magnetized to another person that can give her some sense of identity she feels like she can be free and optimistic again and have a sense of purpose through someone else um but yeah i would definitely i still like think of my days in camp as a kid as my happiest days of my entire life and so i could a hundred percent i would live in like a village i i'm susceptible to healers and all that okay, shit which is sure. not a, not not far off well let it be known that i too would live in a village so like maybe yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. i also would be susceptible to a cult that's the I question i'd live in a village like... that's for sure <laughs> well um, that's what i think you think it is and then if that's well that's exactly right right oh i'm going to live in the village and then you yeah. know three years later you know you're doing yeah. blood sacrifices <laughs> at dinner yeah, everyone's um, chill we're just swapping bread and hanging out and then you know season yeah. five there Where you go there? um well of course i i have to ask about working with jeff goldblum who is just firing on every single cylinder imaginable every second he's on screen it's yeah. I'm curious about the experience of being on set with him. Like when, when they call cut, is it like, okay, I'm down. I'm a little bit of a robot. Or is he no. Jeff Goldblum, Jeff Goldblum, 24 hours a day? You hit the nail on the head. Wouldn't you agree, Johnny? Yeah, he is Goldblum 24 hours a day. And yeah. uh, I mean, there are a lot of times where <laughs> you're like, did we call cut? <laughs> or they're trying to be like, did we say action? Because he's already getting himself geared up for a scene and he's in the scene and then it's like, what are we acting right now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's on and he, he's fun. He's like- He's so fun. incredible on the show yeah, and he's incredible. just such a unique, like his own being and himness is so special. And it's like, you're follow, you're like, where are we? And it was a fun dynamic to add to our very like, you know, we've been- doing this for a while and we kind of all have our little thing and then someone comes in like this legend who's you know so energetic and um creative and special and i think it it reads on the show that's the good thing He's jeff, so would, um, jeff would play yeah. this game that i thought was really funny where he would it was like an association game where he'd say a movie then you'd say an actress then you'd oh, say yeah. a movie. Sure. but because jeff's been in so many movies he kept bringing it back to himself <laughs> of course that's amazing well, like the John, that game really taught me like how much of a cinephile you are. Oh, <laughs> yeah. is that so, John? Uh, I don't wouldn't say that that's me, but I do like movies. So. Okay. Um, John is deep in the cult of movies. Yeah, Dan, Dan and I um, interviewed Jeff Goldblum actually, uh, uh, I think last year at some point, and he was ex he was like capital J, capital G, Jeff Goldblum. And we finished, <laughs> watching, uh, we finished watching some of Search Party and we were talking to each other and we were like, we have to find out if he's like always like that or yeah. <laughs> it's just like, I don't he know. Is. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, he's, he's a fun guy. I mean, he's like fully, he's like the best kind of eccentric, right? Uh, he's just like- 100%. So, yeah, he's incredible. He's so fiercely himself. You've never met anyone like him and that's why he's so totally. compelling and special. Absolutely. Well, hey. you don't realize like, I don't know that in my head, as a fan of Search Party and as a fan of Jeff Goldblum, I never really thought about those two worlds intersecting until you see it. And you're like, oh, well, this is the most perfect thing that I've ever 
seen. Yeah. It's yeah. like, well, and the casting is so good. I mean, the casting is so good. The guest stars are always so good. I mean, we have Kathy Griffin this season. The list goes, the list goes on. I mean, do you guys, do you guys have any, any, uh, any favorite guest stars that were on the show and, and any, any fun stories from working with the, uh, the incredible people you've been able to? I have so much. It's hard to pick. I think mine was Louis Anderson. Yeah. I was really geeked out. I love him so much. And I thought he was so brilliant. And I had like three lines of them and they were my, they were some of my happiest moments. I loved him. Yeah. He's so uh, funny. Louis obviously was a big one for me because I spent so much time with him because he played my lawyer and uh, he had a lot of really great stories like Carson stories or Letterman stories or you know 80s stand-up stories which was and he loves to tell stories <laughs> you know uh, so there was a lot to listen to which was fun um, but also yeah the creators have such good taste in the things that they um like to you know sort of satirize or uh, do homages to are such great things so it's fun to see those worlds sort of collide like i didn't get to work with her but i'm a huge fan of parker posey and she was in season mm -hmm. one uh i was a huge fan of rosie perez she was in season one i mean ron livingston a lot of season one but susan yeah. saranen obviously so basically everyone and then um a lot of the smaller bit parts went out to like a lot of New York comedy people who are just friends who are so talented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were just talking about how that was another like really great thing about the show. It's like, oh, so like all of our friends get to be in it as well. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy to watch. I mean, it's like at a certain point, it almost seems like a parade of like legends. I like, I, I saw John Waters on screen and I was like, <laughs> oh my god what? can you do that <laughs> yeah i know yeah he's yeah the, he's the best uh what was really fun to kind of watch in in this new season was portia and drew's budding relationship um how did you guys <laughs> how did you guys feel when you read that the script for the first time how did you feel when you were kind of like developing that on camera what was that like for you guys because portia and drew you know it was so hot uh, that's exactly oh my god it was that. hot as hell right John right I mean yeah you could just tell the sexual chemistry is palpable it's electric <laughs> yeah John's um, one of my favorite actors ever I, mean, it's, I thought it was so fun yeah it was just I knew it was gonna be so funny and I think Meredith is so special and our characters don't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one. like we had the season where we extort the baby daddy in season season one here I go again uh but Man. Uh, uh it was fun and I felt like Meredith and I talked about a lot how when we were filming scenes together we were just feeding off of each other's like worst impulses and they were our scenes were so big and goofy and we kept- I wouldn't say there are worse impulses. <laughs> I'm like getting oh, personally offended. I'm wow. like- You're best. Uh, you were great. I mean, I was just like, <laughs> I, I kept feeding off of Mary and I was like, well, I'll go bigger then. I want to keep going. And I know, I was like, we need fun. to do a screwball vaudeville. I don't know. Jeez. Well, it was like funny to watch because I feel like Portia and Drew's relationship is like kind of brother and sistery. Like, yeah, you know, there's like, you know, she's like, she needs things from people, I feel like. And so she like relies <laughs> through as like the, you know, like the tallest person in the group to get things. That's done. true. Um, and so it was like, I mean, it was, I think that like added a, a little bit of that like tension to watching those scenes. You're like, oh, you guys, are, you're friends. You've known each other forever. It's icky, yeah. yeah. It's a, just a trauma bond of like, wouldn't this be convenient if this worked? Sure. And it just like doesn't. And like a perfect example of how the humor is coming from the sadness where it's like, I guess we could like hook up <laughs> and then- Because no uh, one else, we literally say no one else will ever love us yeah. because we're like rotted or something. Well, I can't relate to that at all, but- uh, I, <laughs> But um, it truly is such a pleasure. I mean, Sam and I are such fans of the show and it, it, it's so you guys can, you know, you can just, it radiates off the screen how much you guys all love and respect each other. And it's, it's so much fun to watch a show like that. So. Congratulations on everything. I'm so excited thanks, for people guys. to see season five. And uh, thanks for the time. Thanks. Thank it's nice. That. Nice chatting with you both. Yeah, you too. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.